What is up guys, James Brandon here. It's been a long time since I've created a video here. It looks like uh, from my YouTube page, it's been over a year actually. It was February 1st when I posted my last video of 2018. And yeah, if if you, uh, if you wanna just get to the meat of the video, how I created this, uh, this version or my own version of the Apple uh, iPhone wallpaper, I'll put a quick link down to the bottom or just a text saying like where to skip to in the video. If you care about where I've been, um, I'm gonna give you just a quick update. So back in early last year, right around the time I stopped making videos, I, was going through kind of a weird time in my business where things were fine, like everything was going great. I had workshops booked, uh, they were still selling out. I I was creating products, I had a bunch of things lined up, but I just wasn't really feeling it anymore. And I there's a lot that goes into that and I that would be like a 30 minute to a one hour video. Um, but for whatever reason, I was feeling pulled in a different direction and I eventually made my way, and I wasn't even planning on doing this, but I made my way to my church's website one day, and I was going through the website, just clicking through the links and everything. I honestly wasn't there to look for a job, but I ended up on the About section, and I saw this link that said um, Job Opportunities, and I clicked it, and there was this uh, position that seemed somewhat random, just in the sense that they were asking for a lot of different things. Um, they wanted somebody who could produce videos, that's the main thing. They wanted somebody with experience uh, in marketing, social media, um, design, stuff like that. And all these different things, I kind of just checked off the boxes. And I, I was like, man, that seems that seems almost like tailored to me. And I filled out like half the uh, application and Honestly, I, like, I just hit the X. I, I quit out of it and I was like, nope, I've been self-employed for uh, nearly 10 years, maybe slightly over 10 years. And um, I didn't really want to go back to, to having a, a, a job, I guess. So I quit out of it and I, I told my wife about it and we had a, a really good long talk about it. And we both kind of came to the conclusion that like, hey, there's nothing wrong with submitting the application. Uh, if that's where God wants to take us, then that's where he'll take us. So eventually I got back on the website. I filled out the application again, submitted it, and then just kind of forgot about it because I think it took a couple of weeks before I finally got a call back. So by that time, I was kind of just thinking like, oh, they probably found somebody else. But um, yeah, I got the call back. I got through the first interview, then the second and um, then after uh, several months after that, I got a third interview and I got uh, offered the position. So I'm now the uh, an associate director at Gateway Church and I'm working in their central department and we're creating uh, or I'm creating videos for them and we're creating content that's basically rolled out uh, church wide. Gateway is a, a, a large church. We're growing. We've got six campuses right now, over 30,000 members and um, more campuses opening, and and yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. And I could not be happier because I am basically not only just doing what I was doing, which is creating content and creating um, uh, videos and, and photos sometimes, but I'm also doing it with a purpose. I, I feel like what I'm doing now has like an eternal value to it. And I think that's what I was missing before because I would go to these incredible places, uh, Kauai or Banff or, or anywhere like that. And aside from just missing my family the whole time back at home, um, there was this, this weird feeling like, like, what is, what is the, uh, what am I doing here? That's going to have any sort of eternal value. Like I, I was, I love teaching people photography and I know there's value in that. I know there's value in getting people to come see these incredible places on our planet. I know there's value in that, but but it just seemed to kind of fall short for, for some reason. And um, I'm happy to say that I no longer feel like that. So um, that's the gist of it. Um, now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing photography. I made it very clear in the job interview process that if I accepted that position, if I was offered the position and I accepted the position, um, I would want to keep my photography business going, still be able to do workshops and work from home um, on the side. 
and they were totally fine with that. So the only real difference is that it's not full time anymore. It's something that I'm doing on the side. And the fact that I took a year off basically from creating videos and doing just about any kind of social media, well, I didn't plan on that either, but there was um, there was a, a decent just settling in time to the new position where where I would just be doing so much um, at, at Gateway and I would come home and I kind of just wanted to spend time with my family and it was really hard to convince myself to, you know, come in here to my office, sit down, set up all the video stuff and, and crank out a video or crank out a product for that matter. And I kind of think I just needed a, a season of rest from that. So um, going forward, I'm going to do my best to create more and more videos for the YouTube channel here and finish a few uh, video courses that I have in the works right now. And um, hopefully those will be done soon. So we'll see. But um, anyways, that's that's basically it. If you guys have any questions about what I'm doing, leave them in the comments. I'm happy to talk about it and we'll, uh, we'll see where that goes. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, let's get into what this video is about, which is creating my own version of the famous Apple iPhone wallpaper. Now, we've all seen this wallpaper. If you've had an iPhone or if you know somebody with an iPhone, it looks like this. And yeah, it's just a top-down eagle-eye view of a beach with waves coming in. And it looks like it was maybe shot like in the Bahamas or something like that, where they have this beautiful turquoise water. But I saw that before this trip that I took to Kauai recently, uh, last year actually, and I just had the idea, like I was packing my bags and I had my my DJI Mavic that I was throwing into the backpack and I was like, man, I think I could create my own version of this. There was this beach that I um, had been to before and I knew that that would be perfect because there wasn't much activity there, especially in the morning. And um, yeah, so that was the plan. I took my wife out there for a few days before the workshop and we went out to the beach and um, I got the shots. So I sent the drone up and I kind of just watched the waves come in and took a bunch of different images and sequences just to try to capture, you know, the the Apple one, it's basically just sand and water. This this uh, beach, Maloa uh, Beach on Kauai, it's got some uh, some rock features in the water. And when the tide goes out, you can see them. But that morning, the the water was covering them up and I could see them from the drone. So I wanted to get the the rocks under the water showing up, but I also wanted to get the waves crashing. And I realized pretty quick that that wasn't going to be possible in one shot because when the waves are crashing, all of the water behind the waves was basically like white foam. And the only way to get the rocks was when everything kind of like settled down. So that's what we're going to have to deal with in post-processing. So we'll take it into Lightroom. We'll get all the colors right. We'll get the contrast, all that stuff set. And then we're gonna take it into Photoshop and blend two different images together for the final one. We'll crop it, we'll rotate it for the wallpaper. And then I will put a link down in the description so you can uh, tag along with the raw files. Or if you just wanna grab the image, I'll put that in the folder as well. And you can add that to your phone and use it for your iPhone, your Android, Samsung, whatever, uh, iPad, doesn't matter. If you want it, it's yours to use. So, all right, let's hop over to Lightroom and get started. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom and this is the shot from the Mavic looking straight down at Maloa A Beach. Now we have in one shot here, the waves crashing. We've got the sand right here and you can kind of see the rocks in the water here, but this is the other shot when the waves had kind of receded and it was a lot calmer. We can see a lot more of the waves and this is what I want. I want the best of both worlds. I want the rocks and I want the waves crashing. And thanks to Photoshop, we can make that happen pretty easily. So there's not a whole lot that we have to do with this image. It's gonna be a pretty quick process in Lightroom. So let's just hop right into it. The first thing I wanna do is the sun was just coming up off to camera left here. And you can see this since it was first thing in the morning, you can see the shadows being cast by the uh, waves cresting here. So the light was most direct on the back of the wave right here. So I wanna bring those highlights down and make sure that those are kept in check because those can blow out pretty easily after I start processing this more. 
So I'm going to bring those back quite a bit. Next thing I'm going to do is look at the water here. I'll bring up a little bit of detail there. Our white balance looks pretty good here, but I think I'll try to pull the uh, temperature back just a little bit. The water was really green and turquoise, and I want to make sure that there's a little bit of blue in the water too. So something like that. Then I'll grab the contrast and bring that up, and that's really going to make it come to life here. So if I hit the uh, backslash key, this is our before and after. All right. From here, we're going to go down to the dehaze slider. Now with the haze, you gotta be careful with it. It's one of those sensitive sliders that if you push it too hard, it's gonna get its feelings hurt and it's gonna destroy your photos. So I usually try to keep it under 10, uh, under plus 10. If you go beyond that, it really starts to look bad. And I'll show you here. So if you go all the way up like 30, 40, it just starts falling apart really quick. But right around 10, I've found is the sweet spot. If we double click dehaze, it'll reset it. And if we just pull it up a little bit, it's going to give us a nice little boost to the photo. All right, from there, we'll go down to saturation, which is going to bring up pretty much all the colors in the photo and just give them a little bit of a boost. So maybe something like that. All right, next, I'm going to skip the tone curve. I don't really need it in this photo. So I'm going to come down to HSL. And one more time with saturation, I'm gonna grab the sample tool here, come over to the sand, sample from that, and then just give it a little bit of a boost. You can see here that we got plus eight on the orange slider, plus five on the yellow. And then if I come over here to the water, we'll bring that up just a little bit. That gave us plus three on the aqua, plus one on the green. Nothing on the blues, but that's fine. Okay, the last thing is we're gonna come down to lens corrections. And this is something I do on every photo. I've stressed this time and time again. I'll stress it now. Always click remove chromatic aberration. It's one of those things that I do no matter what, no matter what, because you don't always see the chromatic aberration, but especially if you're blending photos together, the more you blend together in Photoshop, every time there's chromatic aberration present, it's gonna stack on top of each other when you're blending images and it's gonna become more and more pronounced as you go along. And by the time you've discovered it, it's too late, and you basically just have to start over, remove the chromatic aberration at the beginning, and then go forward from there. It's something that you have to nip in the bud immediately. So, all right, we'll click that. And then after that, we're gonna do enable profile corrections. And this is one of those things I've said before again, it's one of those things that I'll click on, I'll compare it, I'll turn it off and see if it's making any kind of improvement to the image. And in this case, I don't really think it is. There's nothing happening in the corners. Sometimes if you have like vignetting in the corners, clicking this will turn it off, but that's not the case here. So I think in this one, I'll just leave it off. And that is it. I don't really like to do sharpening inside of Lightroom because I don't feel like I have enough control over it. I'll do that in Photoshop if it's needed. So from here, let's sync all these changes to the other photo. So I'll go over to this first one. They're actually both highlighted already here. If they're not, if you just have this first one highlighted or the second one on the film strip, from here we'll do Command and then click the first one. If you're on a PC, that would be Control click. And you'll see that the image with the crashing wave is slightly more highlighted than the one with the rocks showing. That just means that when we sync the changes, whatever one is slightly more selected will have precedence over the other one. So we'll come over here and click sync. And then I'm gonna hit check all. Well, it's already on that, but if it wasn't, if it was looked like this, I'll just hit check all. And that'll check every single box. The only time you wouldn't wanna do that is if you had done any kind of like spot healing or cropping. And you probably don't wanna sync that across the board Cropping sometimes, it just depends, but definitely not healing. That never works when you sync because each photo is going to be slightly different and it's just not a good idea, trust me. <laughs> so we'll hit syn synchronize. All right, and then let's go over to this one. 
Now, this is a little weird because the photos were taken in pretty much the same conditions with the same settings, nothing changed, but the sand doesn't look very good here. And that could be for a lot of reasons. The sun was coming up, there were clouds in the sky. Um, these were only taken, you know, what was this, 758 and 759. So actually 758, 54, and 759.07, so we're literally looking at seconds here. But the sun could have moved slightly behind a cloud, a cloud could have moved in, could have changed everything just a little bit to where this one is a little bit darker. So all the changes we made affected it um, in a slightly different way. But I'm not really concerned about it because the sand is not what I'm worried about here. We're basically gonna cut this image in half where from this one, we're gonna take the sand, the waves, and this part right here. And then I'll kind of just blend in this part of the rocks here. So I think we're gonna be fine. So from here, we'll just right click either of the images down here in the film strip, edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. And then we wait. Okay, here we are inside of Photoshop. So we can turn that layer on and off. Okay, I'm gonna hit Command-0 just to fill the screen up. And then right away, there's a lot of different ways to work in Photoshop. We've got our images over here on the right on in our layers panel. And some people like to, you know, just add like a white mask and then bring up their brush, resize it, make the, uh, Let's see, we'll make the hardness a lot less. And then they'll paint with black, you know, over the image and then bring in the part of the image they want. There's nothing wrong with that at all, but I'm a black mask kind of guy, I don't know why. I've always just preferred using black masks over white masks. So instead of even hitting that down there, I'll usually just hold down the option key and then hit, a, hit the mask button again, which will add a black mask over it. So that's going to completely hide the top layer. And then all we need to do is just blend in the parts of that image that we want. So I'm gonna hit X on my brush to switch to white. And then let's go with like 50%. I'll hit the five key to go to 50. And then I'll just start painting in that image down there. And really we can go more than 50 because we don't want like ghosting of the uh, the sea foam there. We could probably really just do 100% to be honest. All right. So there's gonna be some ghosting and overlap where parts of the other image are in it, especially on the edges here. If you ever wanna see what the mask looks like, you can come over here and just uh, option click it. And we can make sure that there's no you know black left in this part of the photo. We'll do that again, work on it a little bit more. So this part right here might be a little bit problematic. So I'll hit X and paint with black and just get that out. I don't really care for that. Work on this part here. Okay. Well, this looks fine. And I think that looks pretty good. So. The next thing we have to do is we have to address the issue of all these footprints in the sand. And this is somewhat labor intensive, so I'll probably speed this up once I get into it. But basically what I'll do to get started is I'm gonna hit Shift Option Command E, and that's gonna combine all of our layers into one. Now the other way to do this would be to do like Shift Command N, which would create a blank layer and you can actually do your healing on a blank layer. The problem is, is that you can't do cloning on a blank layer. And when I get rid of these footprints, I'm gonna to wanna to do kind of a mixture of both. I'm, I'll do some healing, I'll do some healing brush, I'll do some spot healing brush, I'll do some cloning, and I just wanna make sure that I have free reign to do what I need to do. So I'll get rid of the blank layer here and we'll get to work on this. So I'll rename this healing. You could also name it like footprints or something like that. I'll hit command one. Actually, that's not gonna work. Command one basically just makes it 100% uh, as far as the size goes, but this is such a small image that that doesn't really get me where I want. So 
I'll hit Command Plus to get in really close. And then we'll get to town on these footprints. All right, hold the space bar down and move around a little bit here. And you know, this actually might be a good time. I usually don't crop until the end, but I think this is probably a good time to crop. So I'll hit Command Zero, Command Minus, just go out a little bit more. The reason I'm gonna crop now is because I don't wanna worry about getting rid of the footprints that I'm gonna eventually crop out. It's just unnecessary work. So I'll hit uh, C to crop. I'll go up here to the ratio and let's just do 16 by nine. Now you can look up the exact dimensions for your phone or for your iPad that you're using, but 16 by nine is kind of like the, the standard for video, um, for HD television. And if, if the phone needs to adjust at all, it'll make those adjustments for you. It doesn't have to be exact. Honestly, I could just send over the whole image if I wanted to, but you know, I don't wanna get rid of all the footprints. So let's move this down here. I'm gonna watch for this wave right here, this one that kind of crested out of, ahead of the other one or the other part of the wave. And I don't like it right there where it's kind of cresting right into the edge. So I'm gonna bring it down until it kind of comes back a little bit. So maybe like right there. I think that looks good. And once I rotate this, the sand will be at the bottom and that's where the dock will be on the iPhone. So I'll hit return and there we go. That just saved us quite a bit of work on footprints that uh, were unnecessary. So let's zoom in again. All right, hold down space bar and let's get to work on the footprints. So I'm gonna hit J, which is gonna bring up our healing brush, spot healing brush rather. And let's just start healing those footprints. So we'll just draw over them. And if you if you notice that the, uh, the line looks kind of weird, like it kind of starts out like thin and gets thicker, that's because I'm using a Wacom tablet. This is something I've been using forever since I first started getting into Photoshop, really. And it's something I highly suggest. It makes processing photos not only easier, but actually it makes it fun because it, it kind of just connects you to the photo more. It's one of the best purchases I ever made. So definitely look into it. All right, I'm gonna speed things up now and we're gonna get rid of these footprints. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to the clone stamp. So I'll hit S, we'll resize this a little bit. And the healing brush is gonna take pixels around your brush and use that to heal whatever you, you uh, paint over. The clone stamp is literally gonna clone pixels and stamp them wherever you decide. So if we pull the brush up here, the first thing you have to do is hold down the option key, which will give us this target. And that's gonna say, pull these pixels and paint them where you choose. So I'm gonna say pull from right here, I'll click, and then I'll just bring it over and paint onto the corner here. And you can see the target right to the bottom left of the, uh, the paintbrush and that's pulling those pixels. And this works in corners really well. It works on edges where the healing brush sometimes falls short. All right, we'll speed it up again and do some more work. Okay, from here, the only things we have left to do is do a little bit of work on the sand just to clean it up a little bit. And then we have to address these footprints that are right next to the water. So to do that, I'll zoom in a little bit more. I'm still using the clone stamp here. So we'll make our brush a little bit smaller. And with the clone stamp, I'm literally just gonna sample from nearby and then just draw or paint rather. And there we go, there's one. We're gonna leave the shadow there because that's part of the wave. We'll get rid of this stuff here. Come down here. Get rid of that one. And there we go. Okay, so if we look at the image, we'll see that it looks a lot better than it did. If we turn this 
We'll zoom out a little bit more. If we turn this off, you'll see what it looked like before with all the footprints, and this is after. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. So to get it looking perfect, we'll do one more step and then we'll be done. We'll hit Shift Option Command E again. And then from here, we're gonna go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And here I just wanna blur the sand enough to where it looks, still looks like sand, but just has a little nice uh, edge taken off of it. So I wanna keep an eye on those parts of the sand that still look a little problematic. Make sure that they're gone. Okay, so right there, I'm gonna hit okay. And then again, I'm gonna hold down the option key, throw a black mask over it, grab my brush, resize it. And then with maybe like 20% opacity and with white selected, I'm just gonna start drawing over those edges. And it's just gonna bring that nice creamy look into the sand. Maybe a little bit bigger on the brush here. Okay. All right, so something like that. And then I'm still not happy with the edges here. So I'm gonna hit Shift Option Command E again and do a little bit more clone stamp work right here, right here, right here. And that should do it. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is rotate the image. So I'm gonna go up to image, image rotation and rotate. So we'll do clockwise, I think that's what we need. Command minus, and there we go. Okay, so guys, from here, all I would do is save it out as a full resolution image, get it on the phone and set it as the wallpaper. So if you have any questions, if I left anything out, if I went too fast somewhere, leave a question down in the comments below and I will do my best to, uh, to get to you. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll talk later. All right, bye guys.